So, you're thinking about a long Langsforth hive, hmm? Well, here we go. Here's the Queenslander version that I actually make and comes in all sorts of colours depending upon what your favourite. Here are some of the colours that I actually use. The stand is separate to the hive and the reason that is is that if you get AFB in your hive and you don't want to burn it to the ground, which you probably don't, you need to put it uh, go and get it eradicated now the eradication process fits on a pallet so if you see people like it's very tempting to make these hives and make them four hive or five hives long however the problem comes when you find that you've got diseases that you have to do special things with you need to be able to pull it all apart and uh, this can easily happen you can see with this hive it just is a stand separate to the box and and then of course the lid and i'll just shut the lid to show you how that shuts ah, and the lid shuts all the way down no it doesn't because of the frames fell out but that's how it actually works now let me run through some of the features with this the hive has two entries, um, two little screws in the sides here that actually come off, take off and then you'll find that the hive opens all the way up to here. Now this is a reduced entry because your hive, your very first nuke will normally be four or five frames so let's assume it's going to be a five frame. If you get the hive from me you will get a five frame nuke with it including the queen of course and that's how it goes now what's really nice with these long hives is the backing board so you just move the backing board out to wherever you want the hive to finish and that's where it's going to finish now i've got a couple of different cover boards that i use here and that's one of them and as you can see, it fits snugly. They just run all the way up, you know, the whole the whole lot. But um, what I find is that there, as much as you think, oh, how nice it'd be, let's just take one of those off and we'll get access to the two frames. You tend to be taking three or four off so that you can actually get in. And so what I think is maybe a cover board um, like this is maybe more beneficial just in three part parts. You've got the uh, cover on the top that we can cover for, uh, for winter if, if need be. So that's my thoughts on that. Now, when we look into the hive, this is what the hive is made of. I, this is actually a step tread and um, that's what I've used, not this one, this is just a piece of scrap, but that's what I've used in the, in the front there. I use hardwood, hardwood ply, and that is actually used in the top there. This ply is a thinner ply, it's 10, 12 mil, that goes in there. And of course I've used that ply on the top and actually made a border around it to give it bee space because this hive was made for these right and you can see in the hole that there's bee space in there if i put these on it what happens is I squash the bees. So if I, if you said, no, I definitely want one like this, I'm going to have to make it a little bit, I'm going to have to make the design a little bit different to accommodate the planks. But that's just something that, that you should know, especially if you're making your own hives, because I'm going to make a video sometime in the future of all the mistakes I've made making these, and boy, have I made a lot. I knew what I wanted. I wanted to make my own design, but I didn't want to use a template because that would have sort of pushed me in the template's direction. So I've just done what I think is great. And as, I, as my apiary grows, I keep on adding new things. So one of the things I added, of course, was the, um, the stand that is separate because when I first started, I was building these with the stands not separate. Now, 
what I've got here is a little, I call it the queen saver. And when you pull the hive out, you've got to do something with it. Oh, sorry, when you pull the frame out. And so when you pull the frames out and there's bees all over the shop, you've got two frame holders. Now, if the queen accidentally is on, if the queen is on a frame and she actually accidentally jumps off, she's going to jump off on the hive. At least you're going to see that she jumps off. Now, if these cover boards are, are open as well, she's going to jump off and go straight down the hole. So I call that my queen saver because it's actually saved queens. Who wants their queen to jump off, fly away and go somewhere else and have the bees go with her? No, no one. Now, I've got blackboard on the side of it. Some people like it, some people don't. But the cool thing with blackboard is you can just leave a piece of chalk on the ground somewhere around your beehive and put the inspections. Of course, you need a proper tool to record your inspections, but this is such an easy way for you to check whether um, you need to inspect. So say if, say if you were queenless, you'd put queenless hive, inspect in two weeks or whatever you're going to do. Now, another feature that I thought very important, Queensland, if the hives get too hot, they will leave. And so uh, what I've done is I've put a double insulation in the roof of the hive and I've also left space in the roof so that there is a gap. Now, the bees can get out the back and um, they do. So that's fine. Nothing can really, really get in. Nothing gets in apart from from beetles and uh, I find a bit of chucks on the top of that works pretty well for the old beetles but I do put beetle traps in the hives as well. So when we close it I've got the roof to overlap the box and that means nothing can access inside the box except for when you open it and as you can see nice color bond roof that's going to last forever any of the cuts i've put a rust inhibitor on so that that's not going to be an issue and apart from that this is a great way for disabled elderly teenagers people who can't lift 40 kilos in a bee box fabulous fabulous tool for that that's all I use are the long hives and I love them.